Hello, welcome to my YouTube video, and today we're going to be talking about hybridization in hybrid animals. Now this is a very complex subject, and I'm just a amateur, so if you have any corrections, or if you're less experienced than me and want to ask a question, you could do that. You could put those comments in the comment section, please. Now, I'll see you on the other end of the video, and have a good time. Africanized bees or killer bees are the most dangerous and disruptive hybrid we will discuss in today. They are a hybridization of European bees and African bees, plus a few other species that are less significant. Scientists in Brazil in 1957 created quite the pickle when they unleashed these monstrosities on the world. They were intending to make a more productive honeybee, but instead they created what is essentially a bioweapon, which destroyed European bees, which are the domesticated strand of the bee population, and caused over a thousand deaths and caused millions and even billions of dollars worth of damage. The Africanized honeybee is not extraordinary by any stretch of the word. It is simply the cross of two subspecies of the western honeybee. But what it does demonstrate is that behavior can be strongly influenced by genetics. Normally, a domestic honeybee would be extremely tame and patient with people, but the African genes turn this docile species into an extremely gr aggressive and murderous animal, which chases people up to a, a mile after they run away from a hive. This also has implications for the rest of the animals we'll be discussing, because since their behavior is genetic, we can see that the two animals are distantly related and their genes can combine, that would create a mismatch in behavior and possibly make the animal unable to survive. A good example of hybridization happening naturally and producing a successful offspring would be the big bird lineage of the island Daphne Major in the Galapagos. This uh, lineage was created when a G. Conorostris, nicknamed Big Bird, was marooned on the island of Daphne Major. This bird, although very unpopular, managed to mate with one member of the G. Florida species and create a viable offspring. These offspring had a hard time attracting mates with their unique calls and behavior and resorted to incest and are probably one of the most incestuous species on the planet. But today they have about 30 members in the species and are one of the few examples of speciation observed by humans. The most well-known hybrid is that of the mule, which is of a female horse and a male donkey. But few people know of the hinny, which is of a male horse and a female donkey. This is an example of a reciprocal hybrid, which means that the traits of the offspring will change based on the sex of the parents. This is also true for a female tiger and a male lion, which produces a liger, and a female lion and a male tiger, which produces a tigon. This mostly results in sterility in the child offspring due to the mismatch in DNA, but in the case of the liger, it has extra effects and causes the animal to grow unrestricted. We can look at more extreme examples of hybridization, such as that of the wolfen, which is a cross between a false killer whale, which is a species of dolphin, I know that's confusing, and a bottlenose dolphin, or that of the peacock and the chicken, which produces an infertile offspring that can only live a few years before dying. I've linked an example of one in the description below, and sadly that one passed away, so be uh, sent, just be respectful in that man's comment section, okay? And, but, the most extreme example of hybridization that we can look at is that of the sturtlefish, which is a cross between an American paddlefish and a Russian sturgeon. When scientists were trying to get Russian sturgeons to reproduce in lab conditions, they would introduce sperm to the eggs in order to activate the egg's growth without actually receiving any DNA from their father. But instead, they accidentally released American paddlefish sperm, which apparently is compatible with a Russian sturgeon and can produce offspring. Much to the shock of every scientist, some of these sturtlefish hybrids had twice as much of their mother's DNA as their father, so they much more strongly resembled a Russian sturgeon. 
but others had an equal sturgeon slash paddle fix mix and shared traits. This hybrid is only possible due to the extremely slow evolution of paddlefish and Russian sturgeons. These animals share a common ancestor about 400 million years ago, which to get across how crazy that is, uh, tetrapods, which include mammals, lizards, amphibians, only came on to land about 359 million years ago. Scientists, as they do, have taken things way too far and created many animal-human hybrids, the most common of which being a human-mouse hybrid, which is used for medical tests. Scientists have also created human-pig hybrids, the goal of which was to create an animal that can grow human organs at the ready for anybody who needs a donation. A less disturbing example of gene editing comes to mind when talking about glowing axolotls. Scientists created bioluminescent axolotls by using genes from a jellyfish species, which was bioluminescent. I mentioned this in a previous video, which you can find in the description. Have a good day, thank you for watching, and God bless you.